Welcome back to the Gridiron Expert. We're continuing our Big Ten football predictions today, and our next team, the Rutgers Scarlet Knights. So Rutgers last season was led by Chris Ash, a first-year head coach, uh, and they did pretty bad. They went 2-10, and ten, uh, unfortunately, did not win a Big Ten conference game. Uh, this year they have a very tough schedule again. Uh, they could make a few improvements. Things just really haven't been the same since their star quarterback, Gary Nova, left. I mean, he really, I think, put Rutgers back on the map. Then, obviously, he had to graduate. Uh, they made their first appearance in the Big Ten in 2014 and actually went 8-5 and five that year. But the past two years, they've gone 4-8 and eight and 2-10. and ten. So, Chris Ash returns 14 starters in his second year at Rutgers, hoping to improve on that. Kyle Bolin is that quarterback. We all remember he is the transfer from Louisville. Uh, so, hopefully, he will add some strength on that offense. Uh, for a Rutgers team that was shut out four times last season. So, they open up the season against Washington at home. Already a tough matchup. Obviously, that was a home-and-home -home series. No one knew that Washington was going to be this good at this point. Uh, but remember last year, they did make the college football playoff. This year, they returned Miles Gaskin and Jake Browning at quarterback. Uh, Washington is going to be, once again, a dangerous team, as you saw in my Pac-12 predictions. Uh, I really have no faith in Rutgers upsetting the Huskies. I think that would be one of the biggest upsets of the year if it were to happen, but I do not think the Scarlet Knights will get the win at home over the Huskies. That would just be too tall of a task, and Washington is once again college football playoff contenders. And then they get good games against Eastern Michigan and Morgan State, back-to-back uh, -back home games. They get three straight home games. Uh, Eastern Michigan is going to be a threat in the MAC and could potentially upset Rutgers. So they do not they do not need to overlook this game because it would be horrible to start off. 0-2, especially when you could win this game against Eastern Michigan. Uh, last year, Eastern Michigan made a bowl uh, for the first time in what seemed like forever. And uh, this year, they are going to be another dangerous team. But I want to give Rutgers the benefit of the doubt. I'm going to give them the win over Eastern Michigan and obviously a win over Morgan State. They should take care of both of those, but Eastern Michigan could give them more of a challenge than they're hoping for. And they start conference play against Nebraska on the road. Nebraska's a team that, went, uh, that has 10 starts returning. Saw themselves rise as high as number seven in the country last year. Uh, then they lost a few in a row due to injuries. But uh, with it being on the road at Nebraska and a team that still has uh, decent expectations, should win around seven to eight games, maybe nine. Don't see Rutgers going on the road upsetting Nebraska. Rutgers just really is as if they're a very young team. And usually, like I said, head coaches hit their stride in year three or four. And I think Chris Ash is a very good coach and has the potential to get Rutgers back to where they were. Probably is not going to happen this year. You're going to have to wait till year three or four. Uh, but I think they're going to lose to Nebraska. And then obviously against the best team in the East, the division Rutgers is in, Ohio State. They do get them at home this season. But remember last year, Rutgers lost to them 58 to nothing. Uh, I do not see them upsetting the Buckeyes in this one. They are the best team in the East by far. Uh, only other competitor would be Penn State, which they play later on. Uh, don't see them upsetting the Buckeyes. So they give a break by a week going into Illinois, two and three. Uh, Illinois is a winnable game for the Scarlet Knights. They're head coached by Lovey Smith, also in his second year at Illinois. Uh, and Rutgers has the potential to win this game. It's on the road. Uh, but in the end, I think it comes down to where it's played, who has the talent, and it really comes down to head coaching. Lovey Smith hasn't done a great job at Illinois, but he's a more experienced head coach by far. Did coach a little bit in the NFL. Don't think Rutgers is going to go on the road and upset Illinois in this one. I really don't. And then Purdue... Uh, another team led by a first-year head coach, or a new head coach, not first year. Uh, and I think this is going to be where they can finally snap that uh, losing streak is at, against Purdue at home. Uh, Purdue could be dangerous. They do return a very experienced quarterback. And their head coach uh, from Western Kentucky, no doubt, could get the Purdue to four, maybe five wins. But uh, it's, a, it's a very different conference from the Conference USA that he's used to coaching in. And I think Rutgers will snap the win streak and get a conference win against Purdue. And then they have to go to Michigan, a team they lost to 78 to nothing last season. Uh, and this season it's at the big house at Michigan. Don't see them upsetting them. I know they'll be riding high after that win. They're halfway to a bowl game with that third win. But I don't see them going on the road and upsetting the Wolverines. That would be another shocker, I think. Although I don't think they'll get up uh, blown out 78 to nothing. Do not see that happening again. Thunder. Not a good sign. And then Maryland, a team that's played in New York. Uh, they're going to be playing in New York in this game. That's going to be a fun one to watch. Um, pretty much, I think these teams are fairly equal. And But right now, I really think Maryland's going to be the better team. 
once again by coaching. They're both second-year head coaches, but uh, DJ Durkin uh, is uh, got the team to a bowl game last season, and uh, I really do think Maryland's going to be the better team. And they probably could have more to play for at this point uh, in the season. You have to watch my Maryland video on that. But another loss, unfortunately, for Rutgers. And then Penn State uh, and Indiana, back-to-back road games, very tough games there. Um, Penn State being the second-best team in the East, only behind Ohio State, I think. Um, now I really don't think Rutgers is going to be able to go on the road and upset the Nittany Lions when they could be playing for a uh, college football playoff berth in this game. <laughs> It's either a good sign or a bad sign with this thunder. I don't know. We've got some storms going on. Then Indiana, another team that I'm very excited to watch this season, read by Richard Legault and Nick Westbrook, the dynamic duo. I've repeated that over and over through my videos. Watch my Indiana video. I'm really high on them this season. On the road, Rutgers, don't think they're going to be able to go upset uh, Indiana with their dynamic offense and a very experienced defense. They promoted their uh, defensive coordinator to head coach, so I think he's going to be able to control that defense, and the offense should be any problem. Rutgers will unfortunately lose to the Hoosiers on the road. And then Michigan State, if you watch the Michigan State video, I have Michigan State playing this game for a spot in a bowl game. If they win this, they'll go to a bowl. If not, they stay home. Michigan State knows what's on the line. Rutgers are just playing for spoiler. And I think in the end, Mark D'Antonio, Michigan State, also led by LJ Scott at running back, will get the win over the Scarlet Knights and get to a bowl game. And unfortunately for Rutgers, they end this end the season on a five-game losing streak and finish the season 3-9. and nine. And, you know, that's actually a slight improvement from a team that went 2-10 and 10 last season. Not the expectations, or not the kind of season Rutgers fans are hoping for. But the schedule is very tough. I mean, the East is a tough division, playing Ohio State, Michigan, Penn State. And then they, um, the West teams they drew out are actually fairly weaker. Probably the toughest team would be Nebraska in that one. Uh, but I just don't think they're there yet. Even though they have 14 returning starters, I just don't think they're there uh, to crack that bowl win, but hopefully Chris Ash will not get fired after this season. I don't know if he'd only have five wins total, but hopefully in his third or fourth year, uh, he'll finally get the Scarlet Knights back to a bowl game and back to where they used to be under Gary Nova a few years ago. So we will just have to wait and see. Slight improvement for the Scarlet Knights, though. They're going to be an interesting team to watch, see how they perform this season, especially with that transfer quarterback and Kyle Boland. So to keep an eye on the Scarlet Knights this season, especially in that opener against Washington. And please continue to like, comment, and subscribe. And please continue to share our videos, and we'll see you next time on the Gridiron Expert.